As of tonight, more than 25,000 U.S. troops have been injured fighting in Iraq. Many of their lives were saved by body armor and by the incredible work of the military's medical staffs. Each wounded American has a remarkable story to tell, and tonight we want to share one of those stories with you. It's about one man, his family, and the courage and determination it took to literally rebuild his life again. 360 MD Sanjay Gupta reports. August of 2005. Michael Fletcher, an airman on patrol near the Iraq-Kuwait border. As the end of his shift neared, Fletcher manned the Tourette gun in a Humvee. We were on our way back to the camp when um, our vehicle rolled. The rolling vehicle crushed him. It's one of the things you never expect because it's, we do the same thing every day. And for that to happen, it, it was like a surprise. Like when it started happening, it's like you can't even re react fast enough. He'd only been in Iraq three months. His body now maimed beyond recognition, bleeding from his ears, a punctured lung, kidneys failing, left arm shattered, broken beyond repair. Fletcher was medevaced out, his wounds so dire his heart stopped twice along the way. He ended up at Walter Reed Army Medical Center. When you get news that your husband only has 20 hours to live, and when you actually see it, you know, it's, it's hard. Fletcher's wife Yolanda rushed to his hospital bed. When was the first time that you saw Michael? When I seen him, it, it was just like the worst thing that I ever seen. I was six months pregnant at the time. Huh. When I see him, it was just, I hate to say it, but it was like seeing a monster, you know? It was, it was just hard. Her husband's face, gone. He was also now missing an arm. And yet, the young couple made a pact. She told me one thing when I first came to, she was like, I need you to be up and, up and about when the baby's born. She was like, I know that's some, she said, I know that's more, than, more than, that's too much to put on you at this time. But she was like, you're strong, and I know you're strong. That promise to be there when his baby was born meant 23-year-old Michael Fletcher would push himself to extraordinary limits, difficult and painful therapy, and many, many operations. Four plates placed in his head to resemble a face. And Michael was discharged in half the time doctors expected. You see, among wounded vets, it's a common story. Better protective gear and advanced trauma care have reduced the killed in action rate. It's almost half that of the Vietnam War. From a pragmatic standpoint, they're wearing body armor, wearing a helmet. It's this part that's getting hit. With the body armor now that uh, uh, some of our soldiers are surviving injuries uh, that would have killed people in any previous conflict, but now they're surviving with massive facial and cranial and extremity injuries. Though an extreme case, that is Michael Fletcher's story. This is a similar same type of weapon I got hurt when I, you know, th that I was using that day. This is a 249. That's the position I was in when um, the accident happened. The turret on the vehicle he was on actually impaled his face. And as the vehicle turned over, it sort of pulled him by his face. Yeah. So it was a combination of, of injuries. Yeah. yeah. And so, Dr. Brown, when you, I mean, you look at this, do you think, I can fix this? I mean, what are you, what are you thinking? Uh, well, my first thought actually is this, this is a very tough case. So challenging, Dr. Byrne first recommended against surgery. We suggested to him he consider just having a prosthesis because once we make that first step towards trying to rebuild his nose, you're in for a very long journey. Doctors warned it would take more than a year multiple operations, countless hours in hospitals, and a risk of losing what little face remained to infection. And yet, I don't want to look like this my whole life. I refuse to look, look like this my whole life. I'm willing to go to take these risks. Well, up next, Michael Fletcher goes under the knife six times, six very risky times. See what his face looks like now in part two of Dr. Sanjay Gupta's report. Also ahead in this hour, Before the break, Dr. Sanjay Gupta introduced you to Michael Fletcher, who was severely injured manning a, turn, a turret gun in Iraq. His wife was told he had just 24, 20 hours to live. And the wounds he suffered were catastrophic, especially in his face. Michael was warned of the risk that multiple operations could bring, but he was willing to take everyone, every one of those risks. Here's part two of Sanjay's report. What do you think? After his terrible war injuries, 23-year-old Michael Fletcher said no. He absolutely did not want a prosthetic nose. I want to look like a normal human being, you know. I want to I not have the stares, put it like that. 
I would love to just have a nose. So Johns Hopkins assembled a team of specialists that would try groundbreaking techniques. What was the biggest risk? Probably the big, biggest risk was failure, literal fa failure to achieve a nose that would resemble normal and that he could breathe through. Whether it's a doctor or a soldier, minimizing risk comes from good planning. Teams of surgeons, medical illustrators, computer modelers, and scientists all came together to create a plan. Animators detailed the damage done to Michael's face. Models of his cranium and his new nose crafted from high-tech labs around the country. A nose mold manufactured to precisely guide surgeons in the operating room. Everything that went into making him him now in his mid-face is from his own body. Entirely his own tissue, right, and that was key for him. The efforts would cost the military more than $200,000. The risks were still extreme. Anything less than total success would mean total failure. And yet still ahead, multiple operations staggered over a year, each of them high risk. The nose is like a house of sorts, and so it was missing the foundation. So we need to build that out of bone and then vascularize it with skin, with blood vessels. Uh, and then build on top of that both bone, cartilage, as well as a skin cover. The first operation, in June last year, Dr. Byrne begins to harvest rib and skin from Michael's own body, a measured success. The breathing is uh, totally better because before, it, like I said, the nose was flattened down and it was like a flap that was just, when you breathe in, it will almost close up. The second operation, his skin is pulled down from his forehead to form a flap over the nasal area. The tissue in the entire body that most resembles nasal skin, it's almost an identical match. Months would pass to see if the grafts worked, and then just before Christmas... Yeah, so he's really on his way. He's a, he's a different person from where he was just a few months back. Michael and his surgeons had beaten extreme odds, but there were still more challenges. <sighs> we're close to the end. It's almost there. Until a few weeks ago. So you're still in isolation. Yes, yes. Apparently your last culture was uh, still showed MRSA. It was April and infection strikes before a sixth operation. Eventually the infection clears and Michael makes a sixth trip to the operating room. It was supposed to be his last. Six major operations over 40 surgical hour and dozens of healthcare professionals involved with this care, all for this moment. Let's take a look. The moment Michael and so many had sacrificed so much for. Does that look like you? As far as appearance, like I tell people before, I don't have to walk down the street and have people look, you know, look back at me now. But how did it feel? Mind if I take a take a feel here? No, no problem. Okay. How's the nose feel to you? It feels good. It feels real like I have all the sensation that I would have with my old nose. Are you, bre are you breathing fine through your nose? Mm -hmm. Could you sneeze? Yeah, I could. By any measure, it's a remarkable transformation. What is it about the nose? I mean, and, and it's just such a part of your identity, isn't it? I mean, more than just the actual surgery, you're giving him back uh, himself. Yeah, and actually we see that the nose is the one structure on the face which you can't camouflage in any way, can't be covered with makeup. And so it, it, is, it contributes more to our sense of self-identity uh, than any other structure by far. For Michael Fletcher, it may be important to him how his nose was made, but far more meaningful where it came from. Yeah, this nose might not be the one I started with, but everything inside of it comes from me, you know, every part of it. Dr. Sanjay Gupta, CNN, reporting.